Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is September 24th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's talk Daniel Dubois, AJ. Right, I've been reading some post-fight stuff where people are saying, should AJ retire and stuff like that, right? I need for folks to realize that boxing is not linear. I'm not suggesting here that Daniel Dubois did not dominate his fight against AJ, right? Knocking him down in several rounds, winning every round. There's no question on who the winner was. I'm not disputing that in the slightest. But I want people to revisit the final knockdown, to understand how close AJ was to winning this fight. He lands two right hands. Dubois, who is not defensively blessed, backs up, the ropes are right behind him. Now understand, this fight comes down to what happened next, and it's shocking, quite frankly. Right, AJ, and I've been saying this, <laughs> AJ has a very good left hook. Right, he's landed right hands, he's on a roll, he has Dubois where he needs him to be. Dubois has no place to go. Right, what does AJ do? He tries to throw another right hand. Understand what a bad decision that was. Dubois ends the fight on his own short right hand. Now, had AJ thrown a left hook, fight comes down to this. Had AJ, who had Dubois backed up, thrown a left hook and done it like Canelo would do it, right? Throw the hook. A left hook allows you to move your head to the right. Think about it, just throw your own left hook. Now imagine you're throwing it with leverage, right? You would be naturally moving your head to the right. You'd be rolling away from the right hand that Dubois throws that ends the fight. Right now, AJ, and I heard Lennox Lewis, thought he had his chin up too high. Folks, that's not this AJ fight, that's every AJ fight. Right? AJ has his chin up. Right? AJ isn't defensively blessed. Right? Where's his defense? He's landed two right hands. Where does he get hit? Right on the chin with the right hand. Right? You're in front of Daniel Dubois. And what part of your body do you leave defenseless? In AJ's case, it's his chin. Right? I'm just telling you, defensively blessed fighters don't think that way. Right, had AJ been thinking about what Dubois could do, right? He's landing his right hand. Unless Dubois is going to come back with a left, the obvious move would be to throw his left hook. Because if Dubois came back with a right hand, at least by throwing his left hook, AJ would not only have an element of surprise, but AJ would also be able to roll away from the pocket. He doesn't throw his left. He comes in, he's more comfortable with his right hand. By the way, and I've mentioned this before, double check me on the film. I believe it's the fifth round of his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. He knocks Klitschko down. This is his big moment. He's fighting a guy who is a former champion who had had the heavyweight title for years, by far the biggest name on his resume. AJ has just knocked him down. Klitschko gets off the canvas, woozy. Which punch does AJ try to load up with repeatedly? Look at the sequence. It's his left hook. Right, that's the punch he chose to try to end that fight. Now understand, he almost has Klitschko gone, but then Klitschko makes a comeback. Then Klitschko goes on to knock him down. Right? Understand, 
here had AJ thrown that left hook, there's a possibility, depending on timing, that that left hook would have landed before Dubois' straight right hand. Or that as AJ throws the hook and is rolling with the punch, rolling to his right, that he may have taken the sting out of the straight right hand that Dubois is throwing. AJ doesn't throw the left, folks. So of all the knockdowns in the fight, the most vicious is that last knockdown. Look at AJ on the canvas, folks. He's finished. Let's talk about another fighter and let's think through the math here because it's riveting. I lost on a fight. Uh, I'm still bothered by it. Um, somebody had to take Tyler Denny on some odds against Hamza Shiraz. Let me raise my hand. I needed for Denny to make it to the fifth round to make a profit. That's all I needed. I didn't need for Denny to win the fight. I didn't need for Denny to knock down Shiraz. <laughs> all I needed was for him to make it to the fifth round. So, of course, you're looking at this fight, and I think it's 15 seconds into the fight. Denny gets hit with a left hook, right? Understand, Shiraz's big punch is his lead hand. It's his left, right? He lands a left hook on Denny, who goes down. So you're thinking, this is not looking promising, but then you notice Denny is hanging around the pocket, and at times he's trying to get close to Shiraz, right? I'll give him credit on courage. He's pocket-centric against one of the best punchers in the United Kingdom, right? A name you need to know at 160 pounds. Let's talk about what Denny should have done, and hey, hindsight's what it is. But understand... And it's counterintuitive. This is what messes up boxers. This is why you need to have Shiraz in against veteran fighters. A Chris Eubank, for example. Right? Who I think would give Canelo a hard time. I think Shiraz beats Canelo. Right? Neither guy is 168, folks. They're both 160. Well, just understand. Because Shiraz is tall, he's 6'3". This is a boxing story. He's 6'3", and he's fighting at 160. Think about the number of relatives you have that are 6'3 and weigh 160 pounds. Probably none. Well, understand, Shiraz is really a southpaw, but he's fighting as an orthodox fighter. So he's hitting you with one of boxing's best jabs, but it's his dominant hand. Understand the risk involved. If you're an older fighter and you know how to move, when Shiraz has his dominant hand extended, he doesn't have a commensurate punch. You have a guy who, theoretically, you could jump on. Now, here's the problem. You have to figure out the movement. Here, Tyler Denny is in the pocket. Right, folks? I'm just telling you, if Jake Paul stays in the pocket against Mike Tyson, he's going to be in trouble. If any of us stay in the pocket <laughs> against Daniel Dubois, <laughs> we're going to be in trouble, right? You, you don't want to be in the pocket against a puncher, right? Denny tries to be in a the pocket. There's a height dynamic. It didn't quite work out for him. Didn't quite work out for betters on him like me. I did think the fight was stopped prematurely. Unfortunately, it was stopped in the second round. My guy would have had to have survived two more rounds to make the start of the fifth. So I'll concede I lost on this fight. My guy didn't come close to covering. But here's the catch. So you're a righty fighting Shiraz, who's fighting as a righty. Now, let's say you're a vet. And you're accustomed to rolling away from a right-handed opponent's right hand. You have to have the discipline against Shiraz to do the opposite. Right? It's a mind game in a sport where sometimes you get hit with shots and you're not thinking clearly. So if you're into movement and you're fighting Shiraz, 
Understand, you don't want to be in the pocket like Danny was. He didn't last two rounds, and he was the European champion, right? You don't want to be in the pocket against Shiraz. Shiraz's first knockdown is a left hook, not a jab. You want to be moving, but you don't want to move into Shiraz's left hand. So if you're a righty, you have to do the opposite of what you would normally do against a right-handed opponent. You have to figure it out and you have to move toward Shiraz's right hand. In other words, you're fighting a guy who's fighting righty. But if you're prepared for the fight, you understand. I don't want to be in the pocket. I need to move. I don't want to move where I can get hit by this guy's left jab because he has ring coverage. In fact, I don't want to get hit by this guy's left at all because he just dropped Denny with a left hook. What I want to do is I actually want to move toward his right hand even though he's in a right hand stance. Now I'll be blunt here. In handicapping fights, I don't trust young fighters to do that. Right? It's going to take a vet who's going to be thinking the whole fight and who's going to realize whatever happens that vet can't rely on what he's done in earlier fights against true righties right you know you don't you don't want to move toward Mike Tyson's right hand that's a recipe for disaster i wouldn't want to move toward Lennox Lewis's right hand with Hamza Shiraz, unbeaten fighter, dominant fighter, right, one of the top guys at middleweight. But because he's inverted, you have to have the discipline to move toward his right hand. You have to forget your natural tendencies. Now here's the catch. By the way, Oscar De La Hoya was the same way. Now here's the catch. You're in camp. You don't want sparring partners who are southpaws because if they're standing in a southpaw stance, that's different than what you're going to face against Shiraz. Right? You actually need an inverted fighter, an Oscar De La Hoya, who's really a southpaw fighting as a righty. Because Shiraz is very hard to prepare for, and I mean very hard to prepare for, understand young guys don't have much of a chance against him, right? The size is a problem, the power's a problem, the movement's a problem, right? A lot of these right guys, right-handed guys who are accustomed to fighting righties haven't developed the movement pattern of moving to their left. That's what you have to do against Shiraz. So you want to favor the guys who, quite frankly, you know, can move in either direction. You want to look at a guy's feet and figure out, okay, does this guy have the movement to know how to move against this opponent? By the way, an underrated part of the uh, Dubois victory are his feet. He did look magnificent in terms of moving away from AJ, also moving forward against AJ, let's face it too, Dubois' jab was a revelation in this fight against AJ. As for calls for AJ's retirement, folks, with a heavyweight division this deep, and with so many, we'll call them fallen soldiers, right, guys who were magnificent on the battlefield, but who've had setbacks, right? Let's remember, Joe Parker loses to Joe Joyce. Let's remember, Deontay Wilder loses to Joe Parker. Let's remember, Zhili Zhang loses to Joe Parker. In this environment where you have heroic heroes who are fallen soldiers, AJ having a loss isn't that big a deal because there's so many guys to fight. Now, I'll be honest. 
If I were an athlete, particularly in a violent sport like boxing, right, the minute my bank account, you know, hit certain numbers, I'd be thinking, okay, if I'm on a winning streak, let me just ride this streak until the wave crests, and then I'm out of the sport. Right? If I were AJ, sure, I'd walk away. I'd say, okay, you know what? I made a run here, and uh, my run's come to an end. Here's the problem. Two fights ago, when he fought Otto Wallen, AJ looked magnificent. I thought that was some of the best AJ footage I've seen. Right? Wallen was a serious fighter. Wallen had beaten Gassiev. Wallen had gone the distance with Tyson Fury. Right? Wallen, uh, you know, southpaw, like Usyk. I get the feeling that AJ would love to have a third fight against Usyk. I get the feeling AJ, of course, would love to fight Tyson Fury. Somebody's going to be a fallen soldier in that Fury-Usyk rematch. Understand, now that you have big money coming to the big fights in boxing, right? Don't get me wrong. Boxing does not pay what you think. There isn't as much money in boxing as you think. But if you're the heavyweight champ, if you're a former heavyweight champ, if you have a history where fans like me would love to see you in against Deontay Wilder, right? Just to kind of like have some kind of resolution to the question, Joshua, Wilder, right? Remembering a time when both were unbeaten, right? My point to you is a guy like Anthony Joshua, who just fought in front of 96,000 or so fans, can make millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars fighting a Wilder, fighting a Zhili Zhang, fighting the loser of the Tyson Fury Usyk fight, right? Fighting one of these. We'll call them New Jack heavyweights, where insiders know about them, but the public might not. Right, Martin Bacoli. Think about it, too. Jared Anderson, fallen soldier. Right, he just lost to Martin Bacoli. You can imagine a reclamation fight. He signs to fight AJ. Let's say this fight is on the undercard, we'll put that in quotes, of some card that has maybe a Canelo on it, maybe the winner of Fury... Usyk, maybe Daniel Dubois, right? A heavyweight champion is going to get top billing. Uh, you and I know that Joshua, Jared Anderson fight. Ooh, that'd be a barn burner, right? Both guys are a little bit defensively challenged. Both guys have ring coverage on straight right hands. Uh, Anderson's young. Joshua might feel that, you know, he's forgotten more than this young guy knows right now in his career. Um, so Joshua has a lot of money on the table if he wants it, right? Understand, too, even against the fighters who I think are better than him, right? Both Usyk, who's already proved it, and uh, twice, and Fury, right? Joshua is literally one punch away from beating them. Right? Heavyweight history is replete with guys like Hasim Rockman landing that shot on a Hall of Famer like uh, Lennox Lewis. Right? We've seen it happen. We know it can happen. It has happened. Right? So, if Joshua wants to continue on, and keep in mind, he's a heavyweight. Right? He's going to be 35. Um, today, there are many heavyweights older than him. Right? Joe Joyce, just off the top of my head, Joe Joyce, Deontay Wilder, Zhili Zhang, uh, Luis Ortiz, they're all older than him. Right? Joshua would be the younger guy <laughs> in many fights in the heavyweight division. So if he wants to continue, just understand, he's going to make more money from this point forward in his career than most of us are going to make in our lifetimes. The money is there. He just fought in front of 96,000 people. The fight before this was a second round KO. The fight before that, he looked magnificent. Right? Rumors of Joshua's demise have been greatly exaggerated.
right? If he wants to continue, let's face it, he has a lot of money on the table to reach for. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.